Hello, welcome back. We're going to look at lesson 2.5 today, and it's all about solution sets and interval um, for compound inequalities. So let's see here. Let me change to my paper. And we're going to learn um, more about putting solution sets on a number line as well as an in interval notation, which we've done a little bit of already. And so um, the first question, number two, is asking us, they're asking us to graph the solution set to each compound inequality that's on a number line, and then write your answer using interval notation. So let's check it out. So there's three here that we're going to look at. So this first one says we want to graph x where x is less than or equal to a negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so I'm going to graph it on the number line first. And so I'm going to mark a negative 1. And because it's less than or equal to, we're going to circle color in the circle. And then because it's less than or equal to, we're going to shade it to the left. And then um, x is greater than or equal to 3. So there's 0, and 3 is about right here. And it's greater than or equal to. So again, we're including 3. And it's greater than or equal to three, so we're going to shade to the right. Okay, and then we're going to put this into interval notation. So we need to do the interval for the one on the left and the interval for the one on the right. So the interval for the one on the left, because it's going to the left forever, it's going to be a negative infinity and comma. And then the right hand boundary is the negative one. And because it's colored in, we're going to use the bracket. And then we are going to use this big U because we're going to union this answer, interval answer space with the, the other one. And so this one, the left-hand boundary is the three, and then the positive infinity is the right-hand boundary. Notice that the infinities always get the parentheses. Okay, so the next one says, graph x when x is less than or equal to a negative one, or x is less than or equal to three. So less than or equal to a negative one is exactly what we had up here. So we already know that that's a negative one shaded in and shaded to the left. That's this one here. Or x is less than or equal to three. So this time it's not greater than or equal to three, it's less than or equal to three. So I'm going to mark the three. And it's less than or equal to that. So it's everything left of there all the way up into the three, and we color it in. And so it's really all of this forever and ever and ever to the left. So because it's or, we're going to go with the furthest it goes to the right. So it can go all the way up to three, and then it just goes forever. So it's actually just one. Um, answer is a negative infinity up to three with the bracket because it's including three. Sorry about that, my ears battering me. Okay. Um, the next one is x greater than or equal to a negative one or x less than or equal to three. So let's try this. So there's the negative one. It's greater than or equal to, so I'm going to shade it in. And so it says greater than or equal to a negative one. 
So that's gonna go forever in this direction. And then, or it says X is less than or equal to three. So here's the three shaded in, and then it's going in this direction. So it's going forever to the left and forever to the right. So it's actually gonna be all real numbers. And we show that by a negative infinity to a positive infinity. So that's pretty cool. Cause it's an or we're gonna cover both directions. Okay. Now I'd like to move on to problems eight, 12 and 16. And they are compound inequalities. So this should help you grow in your understanding of inequalities that we did in the last section. And so we're solving for M. And so we're going to subtract one from both, from all three pieces, right? The left, the middle, and the right. So this is a negative four less than or equal to M less than or equal to two. And remember the only time we have to worry is if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative. My cat's being a little bit naughty. Okay, so in the interval format, it's in between here. So we're including because it's less than or equal to and less than or equal to. So we're including both of the endpoints. And they wanted us to put it on a number line as well. So here's a negative four, here is two, and they both get their circle colored in because it's an including with the equal. <clears throat> okay, next up, we have, we're solving for A, number 12, it's A, so I'm gonna circle that. So we're going to, um, we've already got all of our like terms. And so we're going to get rid of this constant first. So subtracting the constant of 0.1. And so we end up with zero is less than or equal to 0 0.4 a is less than or equal to 0 0.2. And then to solve for a, we have to divide by 0 0.4. Divide by 0 0.4. So zero divided by anything is zero, less than or equal to a, less than or equal to 0.2 divided by 0.4 is 0.5. Okay. And we're going to put this on a number line. And because it's less than or equal to on both of them, we're going to color in the dot. And then we're gonna shade in between. So we're coloring the dots and shading in between. And then we're also because we're including the endpoints of zero and 0.5, we're going to use brackets for them. So let's take a look at number 16. This is a fun one. We've got M fraction. And so going back to page 110 and our rules, I keep reminding you about page 110, um, that we should eliminate the fractions first. And so since we only have one, we're just going to use that denominator. We're going to multiply all the pieces by five. So we're going to multiply three times five, um, seven times five, four fifths, 
times 5x, oops, this is just a less than, and then the 15 times 5. So all of the terms get multiplied by 5. So we have 15 is less than 35. And then the 5s cancel out there, so that eliminates the fraction. We have 4x less than 75. And then we're trying to solve for x. So the first step is to always um, get the constants away from the x term. So we're going to subtract 35. This, hopefully, this is building your solving skills as well, because we're essentially using all of our solving skills in all of these lessons in chapter two. So 15 subtracting 35 is a negative 20, less than 4x, less than 40. And then to solve for x, we're going to divide by 4. So negative 20 divided by 4 is a negative 5, less than x, less than 10. And we divided by a positive value. Even though this was a negative 20, the number we divided by, which was four, was positive. So we don't have to worry about flipping the signs. So we can go ahead and do our number line right below here. It's strictly less than, so we're just going to give an open circle at our endpoints of a negative five and 10. And we're going to shade in between. And because our endpoints do not have an equal on them, they're just strictly less than, the interval is just going to get a parenthesis on the endpoints. So negative 5, comma 10, parentheses. That's 8, 12, and 16. The last few that I would like to look at um, are 18, 21, and 33. So 18. So this, set, this section says, graph the solution sets for the following compound inequalities, then write each solution set using interval notation. So um, it's either x is going to be solved over here, or x is going to be solved over here. So. We're going to subtract two. So we have three X is less than a negative five. And then we're gonna divide by three. So X is less than a negative five thirds or we have our number line. Okay, and then we're going to do the exact same steps because it's the 3x plus 2 again. So we're going to subtract 2. So 3x is greater than 1. And then divide by 3 like we did before. So x is going to be greater than 1 third. So these don't overlap at all. And they're strictly greater than and less than. So we're going to be an open circle at a negative 5 thirds and it's x is less than that, so we're going to shade to the left. And then the other one is x is one third in an open circle. And we're going to shade to the right. Okay, so we have another or on 21. So 2x plus 5 less than 3x minus 1. So this one is good because we get to work with multiple x's on both sides. So I am going to put my x's on the left. So I'm going to subtract 3x. So we'll have a negative x plus 5 less than a negative 1. 
minus one comes down. Then I'm going to subtract five to get my constants to the right. So that leaves me with a negative x less than a negative six. So remember how we always want to solve for a positive x. So I have to divide by a negative one. And this is our glitcher because we're dividing by negative. I'm going to circle that. It now gets flipped over and it's going to be greater than. So a negative x divided by a negative one is a positive x is greater than a negative six divided by a negative one is a positive six. So make sure you're paying attention if there are negatives and you're dividing or multiplying by them. Okay, the or says x, is, x minus four is less than two x plus six. So again, I'm going to put my x's on the left. That's just where I like them. So we have a negative x minus four less than six. We're gonna add four. So negative x is less than 10. And then we have to divide by a negative one again. So this becomes x and I'm gonna to have to flip my symbol. So it's x is greater than a negative 10. Did I write this down correctly? Hmm. Two x plus six. This is ten. Okay. So this number line, we have x is greater than six. So here's six. It's a greater than. So it's an open circle. I just want to make sure I did it because we had two different situations. So I want to make sure I did them correctly. Um, and it's going to be greater than. And then we have x is a negative 10 and it's an open circle and it's also a greater than. So it's everything to the right. So these actually combine um, to make one number line here and then our interval is an open circle at a negative 10 and goes up to a positive infinity because it's everything to the right they overlap they both um have they both are flipped okay then i would like to do number 33 and 33 here in the book says, fuel efficiency. The fuel efficiency or MPG rating for cars that has been de increasing steadily since 1980. The formula for a car's fuel efficiency for a given year between 1980 and 2016 is using this where E is miles per gallon and X is the number of years after 1980. In what years was the average fuel efficiency for cars less than 17 miles per gallon? Um, and then we're gonna do it again for more than 20. So let's write down the equation. So we have E is equal to M, no. I like to go on to 0 0.36x is what I meant to say, plus 
And the first one is in what years X was the fuel efficiency less than 17? So 17. So I'm going to write 0 0.36 X plus 15.9 less than 17. So that my X is on the left. So we want this equation less than 17 MPGs, miles per gallon. So to solve for X, we're gonna subtract 15.9. We get 0.36x less than 1.1. And then we're going to divide both sides by 0.36. We get out our calculator here. And we get approximately 3.06. And those are years. And so we're going to say approximately three years. So that would be 1980 plus three. So that would be 1983 and three years. Then it says, in what years was the average fuel efficiency for cars more than 20? So now we're going to do the same equation, 0.36x plus 15.9 greater than 20. So we're going to do the same steps as far as subtracting 15.9. So 0.36x greater than 4.1. And then we're still dividing by 0.36. And we get 11.4. Eleven point four, which is nineteen eighty plus eleven, is nineteen ninety one. So it's going to be either before nineteen eighty three, is the first answer, um, because it's less than. So it could be anything before that. And then this one is going to be after 1991. That gives you some practice with um, situations where there's some meaning to it. So catch me back for lesson 2.6. Uh,